Hello dear friends, welcome to a new session of discussion in Shiksha Mantra. Here in this session, Shiksha Mantra is going to discuss about verbs. Yes, that's a question I have faced for so very different occasions from my students. They always ask me, so why there are so many different kinds of verbs? But my question is, have you ever tried to find out if there is any relation among these different types of verbs? Yes, dear friends, there is the relation. Whenever you consider the different types of verbs, it's better to consider the finite and the non-finite verbs first. So first you must learn what is finite and what is non-finite and then we'll shift to all the other types of verbs. So let's begin with finite and non-finite verbs. Yes, dear friends, the very name suggests finite means what? If you check it in a dictionary, what you'll get with finite? Every time I speak of a particular term of English grammar, I always inspire you to check for the meaning in a dictionary. The dictionary would tell you what's its definition. Only by knowing the meaning, you can get into its definition very easily. There won't be any confusion. So finite, the very word finite means it is somehow limited. It is somehow subjected to the changes of other parameters. Exactly, finite verbs means the same. When we are talking of finite verbs, we must remember that it is limited. And non-finite, it's just the opposite of finite. If finite verb is limited, non-finite verb is not limited by those factors which creates a limitation for the finite verbs. It's very simple. Don't make things complex. Take finite in your right hand and remember it's limited. Take non-finite in your left hand and remember it's unlimited. Unlimited means it's not limited by those factors of finite verbs. Unlimited doesn't mean that uh, it's really unlimited. Actually, non-finite doesn't go with unlimited. Rather, it's not limited by those factors. So now we'll discuss how finite verbs is limited. What are the factors I'm talking of regarding finite verbs? Yes, dear friends, it's very simple. Just follow what I'm saying. When we talk of finite verbs, just uh, consider you are writing down a sentence like I am a student. Now you are saying he is a student. They are students. Now the same verb be verb, its form is getting changed with the change of what? With the change of subject. Subject means with the change of pronoun, with the change of person, with the change of number. Again, if you say, I was a student, it's not a, a good sentence. Don't say I was a student because everyone is student forever. So uh, take some other examples. I go to school. But when you say, I went to school, I had gone to school, I am going to school, I was going to school, I had been going to school. So with the change of time, the verb gets changed. So finite verbs are limited in terms of what? In terms of person, number and also time or tense. There's another voice that also forms a very great factor for finite verbs when we talk of voice active voice and passive voice we get a change in finite verbs with the change of voice 
So these are the limitations for a finite verb. Again, I am repeating, a finite verb is limited in terms of what? In terms of voice, I've just discussed, would uh, count backward. Then time, that is tense, then number, and also person. So these are the limitations of finite verbs. That means with change of one or any factors among these limitations, finite verbs, its forms get changed. But for non-finite verb, it doesn't happen. How? If I say playing football, he earned a great fame. Playing football, he earned a great fame. Now, if I say playing football, we earn a great fame. There's a change. Change in person and number. But playing doesn't change. It remains the same. Now, if you say playing football, we earned great fame. Playing football, we earned great fame. Playing football, we earned great, great fame. So uh, we have changed the tense. The time has been changed. Still, there won't be any change in the non-finite verb. Now, which one is the non-finite verb? Which verb I was talking of? It's playing. And in the same way, for non-finite verbs, we get three terms. Infinitive, zerund, participle. Number one, infinitive. Number two, zerund. Number three, participles. They don't change with the change of number, with the change of person, and also with the change of time and voice. So these are not limited by these factors and they are considered as non-finite verb. And this is the base of your learning of types of verbs. First, you have to learn. First, you have to remember finite verbs and non-finite verbs. And when you can remember them properly, it would shift to the other parts, other types of verbs, gradually learning whatever is there about verbs and their types. So we are returning very soon with the next part of our video regarding verb. Yes. So stay tuned to Shiksha Mantra very soon. We are returning with our discussion of the next part of types of verbs. Until then, bye-bye. Happy learning.